We got to go bold with this topic, right? Because we said we're going to go with the top five. And this is a huge top five, in my opinion. And it's the top five since last decade. And I was saying numbers like 2012 to you, 2012. Because yeah. I had some players that I really wanted to put in a top five of 2010 mm. instead. So top five midfielders. Let's start it up. So who's your five, Breton? Oh, my goodness. I have to start? Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> it's really not that original. Mm -hmm. It's not original at all. Okay? All I know is that there there are two teams that literally shaped my football fandom, um, and I wasn't even fans of necessarily either of them growing up, mm -hmm. and they just so happen um, to this day uh, had some of the most rock-solid, and some of them still do, uh, rock-solid midfields on the planet. Um, so I am going to get probably destroyed in the comment section because I leave out a lot of really good players at clubs that might not have had the same yeah. success. So, so without, without further ado, at five, Chavi. Okay. Chavi okay? to me is Tiki Taka. When I think of Tiki Taka, I don't necessarily think of Messi. I think of Chavi. I don't know why. I just, he just, the, the little passes just, it was him. It was him. Okay. Four for me is Tony Cruz. Bruce, Bruce, yeah. Tony Cruz. Uh, okay. Um, oh, you I mean, want to? You want to just say all of them? Like, like. Okay, uh, I'll say all of them. Okay. So, yeah. sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. So let me start from the top. Five for me is Chavi. So four five. is Cruz. Three is Sergio Busquets. Two is Luka Modric. One, Andres Iniesta, for me. Okay. 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 Top five. Uh, you can rip me apart. I got reasons. But, you okay. know, it's, it's very boring. Barcelona, Real Madrid. Could you, it's okay, okay. So, I, I'm going to say my top five. Okay, so my top five has, at the five, Toni Kroos. Okay, for me, pinpoint passes come with him. 350 games for Real Madrid. Legend, mm -hmm. legend status all around. Underrated midfielder. Number four, Thomas Muller. Okay, for me, one of the most underrated players in the history of football. And he passed Thierry in uh, the goal score uh, in the champ in Champions League goals Thomas Muller okay so 52 goals in the Champions League and if I not if I'm not wrong he did surpass Ozil too in assists in the Champions League so I have to put Muller here in my four number three Xavi I agree with you Xavi was immaculate Xavi was one of the best passers I for sure saw in my lifetime and yeah I'm gonna put the two Iniesta okay for me Xavi wouldn't have been the same without Iniesta, and Iniesta wouldn't have been the same without Xavi. So I think this duo complements each other extremely well, okay? Iniesta, mm -hmm. I think what I love, why I put Iniesta number two ahead of Xavi, because mm -hmm. Iniesta, I think he just would slow the game, okay? And he would pick the right pass all the time. And, man, Iniesta was unbelievable. Uh, and my number one, as a lot of people must be <laughs> must be calculating, it's Luka Modric, okay? I put Luka Modric as my number one midfielder in the last decade. Look, I'm going to say this. People hate on me when I mention the Ballon d'Or, but he's got a Ballon d'Or, okay? Yeah. He has a Ballon d'Or. And what we just saw against PSG, I would never mm -hmm. see Iniesta or Xavi do, okay? We saw Modric going to a level that was pretty, pretty elite at 36. So... I'm going to put Modric because, yeah, he's he played against PSG at Messi at high level, Neymar at high level. Uh, this game, for me, put Modric in the number one spot. So, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was very close to doing that as well and putting Modric there. Uh, I thought it was more so recency bias, but the more mm -hmm. I look at what he's done in his career, um, you know, Croatia isn't necessarily known exactly. as having the – the depth of talent, obviously, that like a France or a Germany or a Spain, um, and he he brought them, to he the brought them in, in scintillating fashion, right? He brought them to a World Cup final. Okay, um, on top of that, this guy's been ten-time Croatian Player of the Year. He's still, still relevant at Real Madrid when Real oh. Madrid has a policy after the age of thirty, where they only sign you to like one-year contracts because they they have you know I guess sports science. They have the you know, right understanding that some most people do not get better with age. Exactly. Okay. Now we have a lot of people that are challenging that: Ronaldo, <laughs> Modric, 
Benzema. Uh, you got a lot. Busquets is still in the mix, Close. right? Um, but but yeah, Modric, man, I, I don't know. I mean, Xavi and Iniesta at 36 were already off the different leagues, right? Mm-hmm. They were already out elsewhere. Uh, Modric has stuck behind and literally gotten better and, and more influential. Um, and to be honest, I'm talking, I'm literally talking myself into putting him at number one. <laughs> if Luka Modric was French or German, exactly. I, I don't even think, I don't even think that the whole world Excellent would even point. have an issue. You Excellent know? Like, point. Yeah, Excellent. I think Luka Modric would be number one on everybody's list. But for me, I, I think just watching Iniesta, um, Excellent. for me, point. watching, watching Iniesta and what he did in terms mm-hmm. of nonchalance, in terms of just knowing the right thing to do. Being able to turn on the Jets, he had that sweet move where he'd bring you in, he'd 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 deke one way and he'd suck you in, and then he'd use I, I don't know like low center of gravity, mm-hmm. just such like cool, very good. Body he was so body. cool with what he did. Mm-hmm. Um, that and and the fact that he looked fifty, you know, because of his hairdo, <laughs> uh, his, bold, his receding hairline. Right when he was twenty five, he looked like he was fifty. Um, I just you know nine La Liga titles, four Champions League, two Euro titles, one World Cup. You're right though. Next to Chavi. Iniesta, Iniesta without Chavi, Chavi without Iniesta, be very different players. But mm-hmm. uh, the good thing is, is I never really had to see that. So it's true. It's true. Uh, and 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 even like they always say that Barca, like Modric, when he arrived at Real Madrid, yeah. people were saying he was the worst signing in the of the in the history of Real Madrid. Real Madrid. So just the yeah. fact that he went from the biggest flop ever to one of the greatest midfielders ever, with num- wearing that number ten. Man, Modric, yeah. elite nev- levels. And I was saying, if it was 2010, I would have put Wesley Schneider, okay? Robbed the Ballon d'Or, in my opinion. Schneider at Inter with Mourinho was one of the best midfielders I've seen in my lifetime, okay? Pirlo, you said if someone ages like fine wine, it's this guy, okay? Pirlo yeah. was out here. Like, we were saying, how is this possible next to Pogba? Balling and Vidal Pogba, Pirlo midfield. Like, that was oh. one of the best midfields this decade, and Pirlo was aging like fine wine. And for disguise. <laughs> disguise passing. I, just amazing. Unbelievable. And two, I, I, I have to mention here David Silva and Yaya Torre. Oh, yeah. Busquets. Uh, Fabregas. Fabregas is a quick mention, too. Fabregas, mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of promise. Okay. Stayed at Arsenal. Then well, he could have... The potential of Fabregas was a lot more, too. So, I think... I think maybe he suffered with Xavi and Iniesta being above him in the national team. So, yeah, but David Silva has to be. I, yeah, I love the Silva shout because, you know, he, with his physical tools, and, oh. and look, looking at him, you're like, this is not the guy. Exactly. Like, this is not the guy to run a midfield, and he was a wizard. And um, he went to City. Like, a Spaniard he, yes. going to City. Sure. Like, that was such a bold move to leave Valencia. Like, he was one of the biggest talents in Spain. And he said, no. Like, Ishku, like, he did a bold move to going to Real. So, like, it's all about decisions. And David Silva made the right decision. No De Bruyne for you in your five? No uh, no De Bruyne in my five, man. I put Kroos, Muller, Xavi, Iniesta, and Modric. I, I can't put De Bruyne ahead of any. I don't put De Bruyne ahead of Kroos. I don't. Yeah. That's... Yeah, need, yeah. That was my... That was my... It was De Bruyne, Kante, Busquets. Like, I was, yeah. like, even Busquets... Do I put Kroos ahead of Busquets? That was like my... Aye, but yeah. yes. George Busquets for me, he was always just the... He was just the metronome. Like, you, mm. if you watch him... If you see? watch him, you essentially are watching... Like, just tactical you genius. S- you see the game. Stuff. If you watch Busquets, yeah. you will, will watch the whole game. And that's why I still put Modric, put Modric ahead. And look, people would be... Going crazy, maybe if I put Muller, maybe a bit above, maybe Xavi or Iniesta, because if Busquets, if 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 Busquets, if Iniesta didn't have Xavi uh, or uh, Busquets or Iniesta or Xavi didn't have Iniesta or Busquets, like all of them needed each other. So, I I I I don't even think that Busquets. I it's such a hard take, man. It's such a hard yeah, take. I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't go beyond Barcelona and Real Madrid in it's, mind. Um, it was, it was so tough, which is why Busquets. It, you're right, because it was a package deal, and because mm-hmm. they were so, all of them were just so legendary. And Busquets is still playing; he's yeah. still relevant. He's not, he's not the same player, Agreed. but he's still very good. Um, 
But yeah, so what do you think it's going to take to get Joshua Kimmich in here or to get uh, De Bruyne, I guess it would mm-hmm. be a Champions League and maybe uh, at least a finalist in the World Cup? Well, um, if or, you, you know, are... just a couple more years of bossing the assist uh, stat um, in the Premier League. <laughs> Another player too is Pogba, man. If you'd spoken to me five years ago, I would have said Pogba was in the, the the best players in the decade. Seeing what he was doing at Juve, going to United, 19 million, I was saying Pogba. Yes, he went bold last weekend, but like I was expecting him to go bold on the field. Okay, yeah. so I think Pogba, maybe with his next move, maybe yeah. we can see the Pogba we see in the French national team. And Jorginho. I don't think Jorginho will ever be in the top five of the decade, but Jorginho being in the top three of the Ballon d'Or, you know, so that only yeah. shows that the metrics and how it's evaluated, it's wrong. Well, wrong. Put, yeah, if you're going to put Jorginho, though, anywhere close to this, uh, no. we, have to start, we have to talk about N'Golo Kante, too. Kante definitely ahead of Jorginho for this. <laughs> I, mean, just, we, yes. I don't think people even realize how yes, yes, yes. Leicester City won the Premier League. Like, yeah. Yes. That, that, they were 5,001 odds. You know, that it's just uh, unbelievable. And N'Golo Kante, if they didn't have him, that, that would not have happened. Fucked. Um, and and Fucked. then, then he, won, he made the big move and moved to Chelsea and, and won it right then and there. Oh, by the way, he won a World Cup, too. <laughs> um, and Yaya. But, uh, Yaya Torre. Yaya Torre, yeah, like, yeah. leaves Barca. Like, everybody was saying he's the toxic player, he's the problem. He goes mm-hmm. to Man City. He becomes a City legend. So... Yeah. Yaya Torre, like, there was a time that he was the best box-to-box in the world. Yaya Torre, at City. Yeah, yeah. So, it was like, yeah, so Yaya Torre is the other player I would put in the shout. So, I put Yaya Torre maybe ahead of De Bruyne in this conversation of midfielders. Really? That's tough. That's it's a tough. Have, that, that one year that he, what did he hit for? He hit for 20 goals. Yeah. Um, and it's, some of those were just him bossing whole midfields. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he was so much. He was a lot of fun to watch. And fun to watch. I I'm believe sh- he was. He was like City before City, you know, really existed. Well, yes, with Pellegrini, Mancini, yeah. like Balotelli, they were still getting a grip of wh- who they were. But like, mm-hmm. I'm sure if you ask David Silva if he would rather play with De Bruyne or Yaya Torre, I am not sure. I'm gonna say I think he's gonna answer Yaya Torre. Mm. S- mm. He, like I, pff, David Silva, though. So people, if there's yeah. anyone that we haven't mentioned in the top five midfielders that should definitely be here or get a shout, please put down below in the comment section 